this thing from this uh, IPOB press release. It says here, the attention of the indigenous people of Biafra, ably led by a great leader, Mazi Namdekano, has been drawn to the purported disowning and condemnation of IPOB and the Eastern Security Network, ESN, by the frustrated Southeast governors and few self-centered political leaders in the region. We are not, however, surprised because they were the same people to produce, um, I mean, to prescribe us before the federal government tagged us terrorists. The purported statement by these shameless political generals without foot soldiers has only further exposed them as caliphate boot leakers. They know too well that they, they have since lost grip and control of the masses. Hence, their desperation to regain the trust of their paymasters. The only publicly disowned IPOB thinking that doing so will make them regain the trust and favor of the caliphate. The governors, Ohanez Ndibo, and handful traitors masquerading as the Igbo political elite should wake up to the realities that they have since lost the confidence of the people. We understand the worry of their Ifulefus. They are rattled by the unflinching support and loyalty of the masses to IPOB. It's only unfortunate, shameless, and disgraceful that the so-called Igbo leaders will be quick to disown and destroy their own in their quest to appease their slave masters. The Southeast governors again in 2017, they sat together in Enugu state to proscribe IPOB and the federal government de declared them terrorists with the support of Southeast governors while they are not. To their shame, how many times have their northern counterparts disowned the bloody terrorist bandits and the Fulani headsmen rampaging the country? So the Southeast self-acclaimed leaders are quick to disown IPOB and ESN, yet they are calling us to accept the calls for peaceful negotiations. What a hypocrite. How can Southeast governors be so desperate for power beyond 2023 that they can sacrifice anything and anybody for personal gains? In case they don't know, even the Northerners they are trying to impress understand the handwriting on the wall. They know that the governors are on their own. They can't decide for the over 70 million Biafrans home and abroad. How can five Ifulefus determine the fate of over 70 million people? These Southeast vessels should know they are during referendum. Let me read that again. How can five Ifulefus determine the fate of over 70 million people? These Southeast vassals should know that during referendum, they only have one vote, just like the man on the street. If these frustrated politicians are without conscience and directions are discarded enough, they should know that they sh should first push for referendum to determine if the people they are they pretend to be speaking for actually have their support. No matter their pretenses, our people are tired of one Nigeria. Everybody is, including me. I'm talking. They have since opted for Biafra, and there is no going back on this 
irrevocable resolve. We want to unequivocally declare again that the five southern eastern governors and the few self-appointed Igbo elites are too infinitesimal to speak for the millions of Biafrans who are tired of being held hostage in the contraption called Nigeria. They don't even command the loyalty of all their appointees, let alone the egalitarian Igbo nation that never gave them the stolen mandate, the, pre the parade. Anybody listening to these traitors does so to his peril. There is no negotiations on the people of the resolve to restore Biafra where human dignity will be respected. This is written by a Mark Comrade and the publicity, media publicity and publicity secretary for IPOB. This is very clear. They have no rights. They don't have any power. They are confused. I saw the meeting. I saw, I read what they said in their meeting, their comedic and whatever they're writing, that bullshit, that's garbage. They have lost power. They are confused. Sometimes you don't blame them. When you're sitting down there and running up and down, junketing from, from meeting to meeting, and somebody whom we don't even know his location. <laughs> oh, you see. All the neighborhoods sit at home. Everybody will sit at home. You think the outside people are stupid? That's why they are calling for even the referendum. Oh, go to referendum. And I read, I heard one of them was talking about referendum. He said something like, uh, the Igbo people should go and uh, sit down in the enclave and uh, they should take everything that belongs to them uh, in the zoo. And as soon as the meeting is held, nothing will, uh, they will not be able to take anything. These people are so funny. These people are confused. These people are degenerated human beings. So many things. The one I even read yesterday, very more interesting. That it is groundnut money. You, go, okay. you know, when I was in Calabar, they, we used to call groundnut bansang. Bansang, bansang, money where they make from bansang oil. That's what they used in building Nigeria. <laughs> These people are just devoid of history. They don't even know themselves. Michael Okwara was only the best economy in, the, in, the, in, in, in Africa. Am I Okwara? I'm telling you honestly. I don't know how he did it. I wouldn't tell you I know, but. He was. The economy was growing. It was growing by the day. I'm telling you honestly. These people are talking about pyramid, pyramid, pyramid. What pyramid? Pyramid of ground nuts. Okay. Amadu Belo, Taran, Sukuto, Tafa, Balewa, whoever. They were using it for the north. The Yoruba man who had the first television station in, the, in, in Africa was dealing on cocoa. So where did the granite oil develop Nigeria? Which Nigeria did they develop with, with granite oil? Kwankwasa, go and listen, listen read the story of Kwankwasa. It was still the Igbo man that went there, Okonkwa and Sons, that they changed the name to Kwankwasa because they couldn't say Okonkwa and Sons in those days. They were like not. I remember that I traveled to Cameroon when I was uh, uh, the music. We one time traveled and we drove from Ikom. There was a road that led us into Cameroon. And somebody, a Cameroonian, told us that Saudi Mego Juku. That Lady Kemba's father was the one that built that road. He was dealing was an oil palm oil merchant or thing like. So where where are they coming from? Oh, to palm oil. Nigeria is devoid of history and it's so sad. Some of us are old enough to have seen a little bit of this, you know, as children. Not because of what we read in the book, because after the war, they say no more history. They took history out. Unless you want to read about Sir James Robertson. <laughs> we read all that for the history. The real history of our own, our own people, our our net, our net, you know, our land. Nobody told us about it. Nobody. Mm -mm. It never happened. All we're reading about is Empire Day. There wasn't we used to call Empire Day when we were small. <laughs> Empire Day is the day the day that the British man came and and uh, uh, divided us so we go there we march in the parade we carry the, the flag and wave the flag and things like that in the hot sun maybe we were about six years old at the time and they were we are just marching there and this sun was beating the living hell out of all of us he doesn't even know what he's doing anymore so 
These people are not speaking for us. The governors, they are on their own. What they are trying to do, what they are really, really, really struggling to do is to, to assure their paymaster that we are still on your side. Even though that the paymaster himself already knows that you have lost control, that you have no power anymore. They know that. That's why they are holding meeting after meeting in the north, trying to, you know, tell us what to do and where we are going to go and all that kind of thing. You know? Uh, Listen to this. And colleagues, mm -hmm. as we are aware of uh, what has been happening these days, we have taken steps. Uh, you must have been aware that we wrote to traditional rulers and other elders of the north, and we just wrote another representation to the National Assembly. We have served the office of the Senate President and other senators. We have uh, uh, an endorsed copy of this proof of service on the Senate President, and we now have a brief on what, we, what is contained in the letter we sent to the National Assembly, essentially. So we read. Let me not waste time with that thing. Uh, he's going to read the same thing. What, what I'm trying to, why I'm just saying this for you to understand that they already know that the so-called governors and the so-called uh, uh, Igbo leaders have lost grip, that they have no place. So they are working very hard to make sure that they try to, but these people, they already know, they're already holding a meeting. I'm telling you, giving them referendum. The referendum is going to be in the set, they're not, you know, the people in the center. There's a small dot in the center. <laughs> you know? Oh, why, why, why? We are getting there, my brothers. We are getting to our final destination. 